Yeah. So let's say good morning. Finally, we are into you know practical mode. So till now we have discussed the concepts theoretically and try to visualize. Now let's put it in the real time, real world. So I know you guys good at Python, correct? You have spent your time first semester Python. So what is Python? What is list? What is data frame? What is array? Can anybody tell? I know statistics is very difficult for you because you never focus on statistics, but software, I know most of the people will focus at least tool. Tell me what is Python and what way it is, you know, what is the difference between list and uh, data frame? You have done this now, earlier? Yes, sir. What is the difference between list and array? Sorry, list and array, otherwise, in a list and data frame? The uh, data frame contain many types of data. Very good. But array contain uh, same same type of elements. Correct, very good. Chalo, good, at least one person answered. Chalo, let's start, uh, because we don't have too much time to ask questions and do this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is basically, I am going to give a brief introduction about Python and some of the packages, what we are going to use for the our project only. This is not full course. This is actually for your project only. Don't think that this is only the Python, okay? So we are just preparing for exams, that's all. We are not focusing for learning. That's why I wanted to clear because this is not how you should learn the machine learning, like attending 20 people, you know, attending like one, two, three session, what server help you, okay? But anyway, that's not uh, my problem. So let's go to this thing, let me explain. What is, uh, I think, uh, uh, you can see this uh, this thing now. So yeah, overview of Python. Yeah, and if you see, uh, you know, latest data science has so much hyper because one of the reason is along with the data availability, along with uh, you know computation power, along with the parallel computation. And one more uh, uh, cause is basically open source, open source community. Open source is basically you know uh, the software is free to use that we can easily use the software. So one such kind of software, one such kind of tool, one such kind of uh, this thing is the Python. So this Python has their earlier also, but you know, late to after 2018 onwards, it's completely changed the, uh, the way it is operating. So one of the major reasons for today's innovation, today's uh, whatever we are seeing, the background is the Python also there. So what is Python? So Python is a programming language. Uh, and uh, it has so many advantages. So I think a lot of people have done a lot of exercises, a lot of comparison between Python versus R, Python versus SAS, Python versus... Yeah, Please meet yourself. Python versus... Yeah, Python. Yeah. So many things they have done it. Uh, and they finally somehow, you know, feel that Python is superior than R. And uh, one of the advantages with Python is basically it can be very good at a deployment level. So we can use the... There are a lot of wrappers. There are a lot of other, you know, supporting tools emerged, uh, which can easily take to take you to build up, you know, products or different kind of web interfaces where you can easily, you know, use your derived intelligence as a uh, applicable intelligence. So whenever we are deriving intelligent system AI, there are two parts. One is the creating intelligent system. Second one is using that intelligent system, using that in the real time. Also. When you are using that, whatever you intelligent. It should be through some web format, it should be in the product, it should be in proper design also. So in that aspect, if you see Python has a lot of deployment capabilities compared to other software, other products. So let me come to that. So it has interactive, it is interpreted software, modular, dynamic, object-oriented language, portable, high level, and it's it's a lot of advantages. So Python is one of the uh, must and the default tool for the real-time world. So that's the important of Python, yeah. Have, I'm not saying that R is not important, R is also important, but compared to Python and R, Python has a little bit added advantage when you wanted to deploy our model at the production level. Uh, because today we are in the era, every company has become the tech companies. Mostly we need to build the products which are in the smart in nature. So that means whatever intelligence you derive, it should also go as a part of your product. That's why we need to deploy in the product. So today is one more chance, one more uh you know uh, one more thing is the real time analytics when you want to do the real time analytics so you need to apply your intelligence in the products that's why whatever you derive the product in the intelligence that should go and sit with your product 
So that's what is, and as I told you that you know it has a, it has a lot of uh, as I told you that uh, you know it has a lot of open source uh, libraries like NumPy, Panda, Scikit-learn, NLP, Keras, TensorFlow. These are all the a uh, lot of uh, libraries uh, basically which make your I mean these are the things which you can take and apply. Uh, you can just call that function. It's like a function. You know you can call that function apply uh, on your task and the delivery. That's why it has extensive support of libraries. That's what I always tell you that data science is not a code. I think you people will show a lot of interest for code, but data science is a thought. You now running codes is very much simple. Today we have like auto, uh, you know, mach automatic machine learning coding algorithms also there. You don't need to do anything. It will only done. But anyway, uh, but you know, when it comes to the Python, Python has a lot of uh, open source libraries um, which can help you uh, to do your task. Some of the libraries are NumPy, which is required to handle all your errors. Pandas, which can be helped to handle your uh, data, like data frames, uh, which we use most in our project because uh, we are working with a different kind of data types. Hence, we need to store our data in the Pandas. Then scikit-learn is basically designed to help the, all the machine learning, machine learning uh, applications like uh, data cleaning, whatever we have seen, validation, everything will happen by using scikit-learn has package has its function. NLP is for natural language processing. TensorFlow is for deep learning and a uh, lot of TensorFlow has for the deep learning and uh, text also. So that's why you know it has a lot of support and it's an open source community. A lot of people are there to help you out online. If you go and search, you can get anything out of on the internet. Okay. And that only integration feature and productivity. Python integrates with the enterprises applications integration that make easy to develop web service applications. Okay. Like Django framework. Uh, um, Ruby, there are a lot of other frameworks where people can easily take the Python using these frameworks. They can build the front end applications for which you know, we can build the products which can help the customer for better services. Okay. So that's what Python. Mm, so let me, uh, let's, uh, as we start, I think you've already done this. Like other softwares, Python has also some built in functions, built in, it can, uh, built in functions. Uh, it has like data types, built-in functions is like print, max, min, all like other softwares. It has also some built-in function. It has also data types like int, float, boolean. Int is for integer, float is for decimal number, boolean is for uh, single character, and the string is for string. It is all the things, I think. Uh, and it's also like some built-in, like uh, uh, what is it called, operationals, uh, the true, false kind of, you know, in file formats, it can also read any kind of formats. So that's the standard library. And uh, Python has um, um, basically, as I told you that it operates with the concept of the package. Package is basically uh, a collection of the module. A module is basically a collection of the uh, functions. Let me put it very simple. Let's say arithmetic addition is a function. Subtraction is a function. Multiplication is a function. Division is a function. You put four these these four and put it in one module. All these functions together, if you put in one place, that's called module. And if you put all the module, module together, that's called a package. Okay, let me start. Let's say this is one function, this is one function, this is one function. For the ease of use, what we are saying, all these functions we are calling, this is arithmetic that we are calling this module. We call this module and we you can easily call the each function very easily. So this first step is creating the modules. Like this is one module. Similarly, when it comes to the logical operator, you can create a logical and each one function, logical subtract is one function, logical multiplication, division is a function. We can put all these logical functions as a one module called logical module, arithmetic as an arithmetic module. And you can take these two modules and create one package, which is basically a collection of modules. Like that, when we are going to see the NumPy, Panda, Scikit-learn, Keras, some other you know, when we are see these kind of, uh, you know, packages, you need to understand this package has different kinds of modules. Essentially, this modules has different kind of functions. How we will work in the real time is basically we'll call the package and we will call that module and call the function. That's what, you know, you see whenever you are doing, like we'll say import some package and we also import some module and also access some particular function. Understand how the package is created very much important. Tomorrow you are going to use NumPy because running code is not important, understanding the code. So tomorrow I just call one function from one module in one package, then you need to understand this is how it will happen. So what it does is basically 
it will start with function all the functions are together become your modules all the modules are together become your package so when you are using the real time you basically call the function instantaneous the package and call these modules and access the functions in the modules and get your work done that's why you always see this kind of things understand so some of the libraries are basically numpy it's called as numerical python it basically used to handle all your array calculations pandas pandas means basically python for data analysis one of the most most important package we will use to read the data manipulate create all the variables and matplotlib and seaborn there are two other packages are there when i am saying packages you need to understand package has modules modules has function when i use the matplotlib for visualization i will call the matplotlib package and that matplotlib uses different kind of modules in that package and within that modules i can call the functions so i can go to that granular level okay scipy is for inferential statistics all our parametric and non parametric statistical text scikit learn is basically data pre processing and machine learning package nltk jensen pass passy these are natural language processing and text learning packages keras and tensorflow deep learning these are basically a neural network computer vision chatbot kind of. other than this recently we are seeing some kind of transformer mask gpt3 but these are all packages when packages comes they made lot of things packed and everything ready for you you just need to call them and use it that's why python is so powerful people are using so today we will discuss about the numpy and the permit point so numpy is basically as i told you that numpy is basically uh, stands for numerical python this library contains linear algebra functions fourier transformation advanced random you know number capability so whenever you wanted to uh, you know use any algebraic functions function algebraic module all the functions there in the fourier transformation this this you need to numpy works with pro project uh, Uh, object multi-dimensional arrays also. Arrays are basically collection of the values that have one or more types. Now, NumPy structure is basically an array. An array with one-dimensional call is a vector. An array with two-dimensional is called matrix. If they are same type, that's called list. If they are different type, that's called data frame. So, so when actually NumPy is working, creating, indexing, slicing, let's say. If you have ten people, if you want to only select the four people, that's called sliding, sorting, reshaping, combining, splitting, adding, removing elements. Some of the descriptive statistics also. NumPy is very useful. Let's go and see the practicals on the NumPy. So most of my training will happen on the Jupyter notebook. Uh, I think you install the Jupyter notebook. So how do you import? First, you need to install the package before. So to install the package, actually the command is pip install. Once you install the package, you need to say pip install. Whatever package you want to install, you need to say that. So I already installed. That's why I'm not doing. So today we'll discuss about Python NumPy. So how do? But I. So this is what my Python local interpreter, local program. So first I need to incorporate NumPy into my system because I'm using NumPy packages. Before using the package, I need to call call that package into my, you know, my environment or my program. So that's why I'm saying import NumPy as np. This as np is the alias because whenever I wanted to call any module, any function within the package, I always need to say NumPy dot that module that function. So instead of always writing NumPy NumPy, just giving a alias as np. So what I'm doing here is <coughs> import NumPy as np. That means whenever I wanted to access any module, any function in the NumPy, I just need to say np is enough. Okay, guys. So that's what I am doing. Import NumPy as np. <laughs> See, if I don't import, that's why what it is saying np is not different because without importing, I am using. So first, I need to import NumPy as np. It will take that. now. Once it is run, you will see the star when it is running. After that is done. Now you see. Now creating a array with one dimensional. Creating array basically we are saying np dot array one two three. That means I am creating a array with one two three and printing is basically print here. So if I say print here, see one two three is array is created. To create the array is basically np dot array. So now same thing we are doing with creating with multiple rows. So what we are doing b equal to np dot array one two three is one row four five six one row seven eight nine is one row. So one minute, let me wait, guys. Clear all the output. Wait, guys. Forty-eight people. Great, boss. That means you guys doesn't worry about theory. Anyway, very bad, na? You are not understanding the truth of the type.
I just wanted to know who all attended for practical and um, missed the theory. Uh, whoever, please capture the screenshot and send it to me. Okay. So what we are trying to do? Okay. Now see. Now, if you see the output, you never see the input. Yeah. So what we are trying to do, creating array with multiple rows. So we are saying B equal to NP dot array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What we are trying to do here? We are trying to create a similar kind of three three rows. That means more than one 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 dimensional is basically called matrix. So and uh, to see that shape, actually we say B dot shape. So what is the shape here? Three by three. That means the three rows and three columns. That's what we have done. So this is what we will create the array. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Did you finish the NumPy in your session earlier? Yes, sir. Then why I'm wasting all my time? Yes. Can I skip this or continue? Sir, so continue, sir. Okay. Then automatic operators also, because I told you that, you know, what we are trying to do basically here, we have two errors, two lists basically, we try to add it. So one error we are saving in my area one, one we are saving in my array two. We just say my array one. If you want to add these two, basically my array one plus my array two. So two plus three six. Two two two. What I am doing? My array one plus my array two. Okay. This one. If I try. Two plus three five. Now I am getting six now. I am getting six multiplication. I am doing multiplication here. First, I am doing add, then multiplication. You see, two things I am doing here. Okay. Guys, understand this. Why y equal to okay? So if I you can do multiple because this second plus I am multiplying now my array one with my array two. So y y x x. If I say y y Five, five, five. Again, so similarly that. Now, uh, next we can also do the sorting. That means whenever you wanted to handle any single dimensional array, then go to leave the number. So if you want to sorting that, but what I am doing first, I am creating the random numbers between one to hundred. Then I am printing. Then I will sort. Then I will print. Okay. So what I am doing, see, might be so the output could be different. So what I am doing now, I, I basically created three random numbers: ninety-nine, ten, and sixty-three. That's what this function do. Then if I want to sort a dot sort is basically it's sorted. Similarly, creating a array of multiple rows and columns also with the random because the function is basically demonstrated. NumPy array has a lot of, uh, you know, it can also create a lot of random numbers. Tomorrow when you are generating multiple, multiple uh, you know, machine learning, you need to set the random seed because uh, if, you, if you want the same model rep reproducibility, you need to set the random number. So that's where, you know, it will be used. So here, what we are creating a random array with multiple rows and columns. That's what it does. And that's all simply area. If I, so if I have a area one, two, three, and I want to append a fourth, uh, you know, to a fourth row. So this is what it does. I will share this, you run it. This is not, uh, my kid also will do this. So then uh, inserting one, one, one column between the matrix also, uh, like what I am doing np dot insert. That means numpy, basically I'm calling this function in the numpy package, that's why I'm saying numpy dot insert. That's what I'm always saying that package dot module dot function. Insert is a pack function or module which is there in numpy. So np dot insert a comma two comma six. What it try to do is basically it is going to insert six after second place. That means this is what it does. 
similarly delete also we can also you know uh, if you say a let's in our area we have one two six comma three so what i am saying np delete area x is equal to zero means it will delete that row okay so what we np dot delete a comma second location x is equal to zero okay so we have one two uh, my delete array comma four x is zero will read row on the index four of the array single dimension so here what i am trying to say np dot delete a is my array my array has one two three and i want to delete which one which location i want to delete i want to de delete the second row what is the array always starts with zero zero one two i want to delete the three if i say x is equal to zero that will be permanently deleted so if you say this is what it does if i say one now already deleted it won't happen okay uh, okay then i think uh uh nb to shape of the array you can see by using command say like uh, this is one error four five six seven eight nine we can also be like any element also between this also like one two three four five six seven eight nine we can delete complete row or complete column also from the array itself some matrix matrix also itself but for matrix i think we have very good um, you know tool called pandas we can also do a descriptive statistics like if you have array one two three four five six seven eight nine and if you can also find the sum if i do the sum also we'll get the sum let's say this is what your array b if you say b dot sum it will give the sum of all the variables 45 so it will also give the minimum value uh, this is very simple this is push step don't think that everything is going to be much easy then you can also find the median then you can also calculate the square root these are all useful when, when this is also can you also find some math mathematical functions also there in sign b everything is there you can also do logarithmic function log b you can also find the absolute values so that's what so checking the equality of the matrix and array also. Let's see here import an NP. First array I am creating two to three. Second array is basically three three three. I am just checking whether the two matrix are equal or not. They are equal function. Say for concatenation also. You can also do the concatenation. You can just concatenate these two arrays. This is what concatenation will does. And one more most important thing is when you are working with this, you need to save the data. Let's say how to save from NP to CSV. So that is np.save.txt delimiter comma. You can give comma, you can give star, you can give any tab delimited file you can export. Because when you done something, you need to show that output in CSV to the clients. So that's why you know import export is very important, but NumPy has this capability. Let's say array one is this one, array two, I'm just doing array three is array one plus array two. That means I will get five, five, five. Now I want to save this output in CSV and save it. For that, I will say np.save.txt. So if I do like this, then what will happen? Wherever we are working, actually in that location, I can get the data at CSV. Let's see. So it's came 555. Okay. Understand? So this is what NumPy. I think NumPy is very important. Uh, you know, this thing, most of the times, I think you need to, you, even though you, People has given big data. You need to take 52 people. My God, it's crazy actually. Uh, so when people are given multiple data sets, you need to basically take the variable, any single variable, and do this kind of you know this thing. This is very going to be very helpful. Okay. I'm, I'm in session. I will call you back. Okay. So that's why NumPy is very very important. Um, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, right now, as I told you that I am not giving the complete story, I am just giving whatever required for whatever is required for you only. So with this, we have done NumPy. Uh, we'll also do the Pandas at 11 o'clock. Okay, guys? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see. Okay, let me stop the sharing recording.